And this is why I tell people to trade small, to focus on the process. Two of my eight figure students prove it. Um, and you know, most of my new upcoming millionaire students prove it too. What's up, Tim Sykes Millionaire Mentor and Trader here uh, with a very important video lesson. Uh, we're coming up on 10 years since this article uh, went live on CNN. Tim Grittani, one of my top students at the time, uh, he was my second millionaire student. Now I have 32 millionaire students. Uh, but at the time, he was my second millionaire student and his story went viral. You can see the headline, 1500 into a million dollars in three years. Um, I can't thank Tim Grittani enough for his dedication, for sharing all of his trades publicly, for sharing all of his lessons publicly. He's a great guy. We've been to uh, Italy, Switzerland, Bali, um, the British Virgin Islands together. Like We've traveled a lot. He's now got two kids. He's all grown up, um, closing in on $15 million in profits. Amazing, amazing run. But to celebrate this 10-year anniversary... Um, it's interesting because I'm looking at my screen here too. Um, you know, I just got back from Japan. In case you're wondering, like, why do I look so tired? Literally just got back from Japan. My, my jet lag is all over the place. Um, but, you know, I was in Japan celebrating my 32nd millionaire student, Bryce. Uh, you can see some of these pictures here, I guess. Uh, will we insert the pictures? Or you'll show my screen. I literally posted this and it's not even like in focus. And I, I wish I had like looked at the photos closer. Anyways, it was pretty cool going to this bamboo forest with Bryce. He's never even like been outside the country. One of his first trips outside the country is to Japan, uh, him and his girlfriend. And we had this uh, bamboo forest pretty much to ourselves. Um, you know, it's it pretty amazing uh, where it was like snowy. So normally this bamboo forest is, you know, packed with photographers but because it was snowy there was nobody there which you know it was a little cold but it was magical to have it all to ourselves um so i'm sitting here like celebrating the 32nd millionaire there's actually about 40 millionaires now some of them want to remain private if you click the link below you can apply for my challenge um, all my new millionaire students are coming from my challenge why because they get all the dvds video lessons webinars separate chat room Archive webinars, Tim Gritani, shout out to him, 70 plus webinars, um, all archived for challenge students. One memorable one, one of his last ones that he did before he had all the kids. Um, you know, he made 300,000 in a day. I said, how are you gonna celebrate? He's like, can I give a webinar? I was like, of course. Last or second to last webinar uh, that he's given, he made $300,000 in a day and explains it in a webinar. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, to celebrate this 10 year anniversary, uh, you know, I didn't even realize it was coming up until someone mentioned it. Um, I gave uh, challenge students a homework assignment during one of the recent webinars. And I said, go look at Tim Grittani's early trades and go look at Jack Kellogg's early trades. Both of them are eight figure traders. Both of them started with a few thousand dollars. Um, what, like six, seven years apart, right? Like I've been teaching now for 15 years. But for me, it's so interesting to see the process by which these students, um, you know, really succeed. It's not just about any one pick, any one uh, pattern, any one trend, any one sector. It's understanding the, the market as a whole and where the opportunities are, where the edges are. Um, and so it's fascinating for me, not just like how they're trading now, like Tim Grittani's off building algorithms. Jack is trading like the, the QQQs and the triple QQQs, um, you know, with huge size. Neither of them, I think like in, at this point in their trading career, neither of them have lessons that are applicable to most people watching this. And I just want to be upfront about this. It's inspiring to have eight figure students, but 99.999% of my students don't have eight figures, let alone seven figures or even six figures. And if you try to trade a big uh, account strategy using a small account, we've seen people get um, annihilated. So I'm not saying trade like them now and you know you don't need to build algorithms. Like if you have like a $2,000 account, I see some people saying like, oh, Tim Grittani's building algorithms. I got a $2,000 account. Let me build an algorithm. Why? Like you don't have enough money. You, you learn how to even spell the word algorithm. Like you have to realize where you are in your journey. Um, and that's why this homework assignment, like I'm, I'm gonna pull up these screenshots. Um, you know, 
I asked, just challenge you, and I said, go analyze Tim Grittani and Jack Kellogg's early trades um, and see what you come up with. I didn't know what they would come up with. I don't have time to analyze all this stuff. I had an idea. I knew that both of them started small, like many traders don't start small like I tell them to. Then they lose a lot. Then they're like, oh, I see why you told me to trade small. Tim Grittani and Jack Kellogg, to their credit, paid attention and they followed instructions you know, early on. Um, I wish more students would like that. But this was uh, Jack Kellogg's uh, early trades. Pascal's here too. Say hi. Hey everybody. Have you been have you been filming since Tim Grittani started? No. When did you start with me? Uh, five, five years ago. So you saw Jack Kellogg. Oh yeah, like, like we growing up before your eyes. Person. All right. So this is Jack Kellogg's. Let me go back to this other screenshot. The second screenshot, which is smaller numbers, um, is Tim Grittani. So. You can see here his average gain in one month was in the first month of trading. Um, I mean, it's, it's really not much. It's, it's $50. Um, that's it. So some of you are like, oh, Sykes, you plus or minus, you make 100, lose 100, you're nothing. This is what all my top students did. First month, he made 50 bucks. Second, uh, or first month on average, his losses were $85. So we actually lost more than he gained. Second month, his average gain even decreased to $44, but his average loss also decreased to basically $75. Um, and then by the third month, his average gain had gone up a little bit to $60, and his average loss was down to $29. And for me, it's just fascinating to see this. This is based on dozens of trades. They're all publicly available. Um, but what Grittani did over his first three months was he was learning to lock in profits and he was learning to minimize his losses. You can see the screenshot early on. He said trading implosion and he's losing like $10, $20 because to him, that was a lot of money back then. Um, but he was focusing on his process. Okay. I always tell people to do this. Very few people listen. The second screenshot, uh, is Jack Kellogg's, uh, first few months as a trader. He was always a little more aggressive. So first month. Uh, on average, he was making $211, and on average, he was losing $94. Second month, uh, his average gain was $265, so it went up a little bit, but his, uh, his average loss also ballooned, doubled to negative $172. Um, and then by month three, his gains kept getting a little bigger now, averaging $278, and he controlled his losses a little better at negative $156. Mind you, these are just the first three months. Tim Grittani made nothing his first year. Jack Kellogg, after a year, he was down $2,600. Um, and understand, they both paid a few thousand dollars for my challenge, too. So they're down in their investment of education. Their break-even are down trading-wise after a year. And these are two, arguably, some of the best traders in the entire stock market, um, having done the seemingly impossible. So I bring this up to help you understand uh, you know, how you'll probably do for year one. So you, you shouldn't be, you know, too excited, like, oh, I'm going to make all this money overnight. No, you're probably not. Obviously, every year is different. Every person is different. But the point is, is that they traded small. They focus on their process. By doing that, that allowed them to have an edge over people later on. Um, you know, Pete Sampras, if you're familiar with tennis, do you know Pete Sampras? If you know tennis, um, you know, Pete Sampras was a great uh, U.S. champion, U.S. Open champion, one of the youngest. Um, but early on in his career, it was actually interesting. He either, I don't know if he switched coaches or the coach just switched strategies. But either way, he went from one of the top-ranked amateur U.S. Uh, tennis players in the entire nation. And the new strategy uh, dropped him hugely. Like, he fell out of the rankings. Everyone's like, oh, you're a has-been. And the new strategy, the switch was, at first he was like trying to win matches. And like, you know, if you're a tennis player, I used to be a tennis player, you know, you're, you're trying to, you know, obviously get more powerful in your strokes. Like you're trying to perfect your stroke. But at the same time, you also want to win matches. Like their strategy. The new strategy that dropped him out of the rankings that, you know, no one saw him coming when he actually did win the U.S. Open a little while later. The new strategy was... Don't worry about where the ball goes. Don't worry about winning matches. Just hit the ball as hard as you can. And everyone's like, what, like, what are you talking about? But he trusted his coach. Um, it would help if I knew the, the coach's name. I want to say it's like, I want to say it's Tim Gullickson. I don't know why. Let's see. 
Pete Sampras, early tennis coach. Uh, who trained Pete Sampras? Pete, Pete Fisher, Fisher. Joe Brandy, and Tim Gillickson. It was Tim Gillickson. I don't, it doesn't matter who, which coach is which or whatever. The point is, is that he switched. He fell out of the rankings. He lost a lot of money. Or not a loss, a lot of money. I'm, I'm looking at trading too. The market is open too. I can't help it. Um, he lost his matches. Everyone thought he was a has-been, but he was working on just hitting the ball as hard as he could. And after he did that for a little while, whether it was a few months or a few years, it doesn't even matter. He got so much better than everybody else, he hit the ball harder than everybody else. This is the same kind of way that I teach. And this is why I tell people to trade small, to focus on the process. Two of my eight-figure students prove it. Um, and you know, most of my new upcoming millionaire students prove it too. Anyways, the point of this video, a yes, trade small, but also I want to go more in depth. Like this is just one screenshot, um, you know, from, you know, shout out to my challenge student, Miguel for putting this together. There's so much more information. Um, we have so much data, so many archived messages, uh, commentary, um, chat posts, trades, all on Profitly, and I really want to flesh it out, uh, kind of like you know ESPN 30 for 30 kind of uh, strategy to learn from the early days of Tim Grittani and Jack Kellogg. And the reason why I'm making this video now is because I need your help. Um, Tim Grittani, he's busy being a dad. He's busy trying to build algorithms. Um, you know, I need you to leave a comment below and say something like, I want to you know, dig into your early trading. Jack Kellogg, same kind of thing where like he's busy trading big and you know, I told him like, you know, one time like he's doing well, he's made nearly $2 million in like two months of 2023. He's doing fantastic with a big account, but he's trading a strategy that again is not good for small accounts. And I'm like, come back to the OTCs, it's better. He's like, no, you can only make five or 10,000 a day with OTCs. And he's right about that. There's not as much volume with OTCs. So neither of them are doing what they did in the beginning to turn a few thousand into several million. I respect both of them an amazing amount. Um, you know, Tim Grittani is also like a great family man. Jack Kellogg is young, but like he's really pushing himself. But for your purposes and for the purposes of students trying to get better, um, I want them both to kind of go back into the beginning of their journey and let's relive it and let's really dig in. Um, you know, we have like some data from Miguel, but there's so much more data to really detail and dig in and see exactly how you build up your knowledge and how you build up an account to trade with eight figures. Because statistically, this is impossible. Like if you, if you say, look, like Tim Grittani and Jack Kellogg both made, you know, turned a few thousand into several million into eight figures, which is more than I've made. Um, outsiders will be like, no way, it's a scam, it's luck. Like they'll write it off to something other than what it really is, which is hard work, strategy, scaling up, nonstop optimizing their own strategy and learning from their mistakes. Um, and I want to really flesh this out. So if you could do me a favor, leave a comment below, uh, say, look, you know, Tim and Jack, congratulations, but let's, let's really dig into your early trading. Like when you were break even, when you lost a little, when that flipped from, you know, losing a little or, or um, you know, making a little to obviously making a lot. And I really want to focus on like the, the first million, the second million, the third million, which, you know, to both of them is like uh, ancient history, you know, especially for Gritani. This was like a decade ago. Um, the CNN article was right when he crossed over a million over the next few years, he made several million more. Jack just crossed over a million, like two or three years ago. Um, so it's more recent, but I think that there's going to be a lot of lessons and I want to like go to their hometown. I want to like interview their, their family. Um, Tim Grittani used to work at like state farm. I want to go to like state farm and like see what those people are, are doing and see what they think. Not in like in an abusive way or like, a you know, an, an annoying way, just as like to help you understand, like anybody who works at State Farm, anybody who wears khaki pants and works at like a little office, like you can do amazing things. Jack Kellogg was a former valet. I want to go interview like his other valets and see what they thought. Cause 
from what I've heard, he was like studying even while like he's parking other people's cars, but then he would like study. Um, and he was using his valet tips to pay for the challenge. It's like, it's awesome to see this, but I really want to, you know, I want to learn from them in detail. That's basically what it is. Like I said, I have, you know, nearly three dozen millionaires. Everyone has a unique story, but only two eight figure students. So I want this to be like, I don't know, I'll call it like the DECA millionaire challenge, right? Like it's been 10 years since Gritani's article. They've both made 10 million plus. It's the DECA. Um, so I'm really interested in this, but I need your help because uh, I think, you know, Gritani's busy being a, a family man and algo like builder. Um, Jack is busy being like this, you know, really uh, big, big position size trader. Um, so it's going to, I think it's going to take a little convincing to get them to go back to dig through all the, uh, you know, the, the beginnings of their career. And I will tell you, because I'm not the most organized person. Like if you've read, you know, my latest, my, my team's latest book, the complete penny stock course, this was written by my student, Jamil. We actually have another student who just wrote a book organizing all my stuff. And I got to actually read that. Um, we have an ace in the hole though, because Tim Gratani's brother is very organized. And so I'm going to need your help convincing Tim Gratani and his brother to get on this. Tim Gratani's brother helped organize trading tickers and trading tickers part two. Amazing production value, amazing organization, amazing education for you guys. Um, and I want to get Tim Gratani's brother. I don't know. I don't even know what he's doing, but I want to get him helping to organize all this stuff. Cause this is really like just digging into the past. And I know some people will say, it doesn't matter what they did five, 10 years ago, the markets changed. Yes. But like, even if it's different stocks, different sectors, different patterns, you can learn and see what the process is. Cause you have to understand like, this is seemingly impossible. When I first got started teaching, turning a few thousand into, you know, just a few million, I didn't even make 10 million. I still haven't made 10 million from trading. So they've taken what I've taught them and then built on top of that. And I want to go backwards and, and find everything that made them successful, everything that they had problems with. This is not going to be like some sugar coated project. Like, look at me, I can make $10 million. We want to get into the details, the nitty gritty, because I know both of them have worked their butts off and I want to see exactly what they're doing with Excel spreadsheets, with interviews, like really dig into this. You let me know if this is a good idea. Um, I am going to need your help because I know that neither of them like probably want to go back into the beginnings of their careers. It wasn't a fun time. They're having fun now, you know, but I think it would be very useful to you guys. Um, so do me a favor, leave a comment, share this on Twitter. If you talk with Tim Gratani or Jack Kellogg, you're probably just talking to an imposter, by the way, you're, you're no one. No one's DMing them. <laughs> like you're not DMing them. Um, just, I get so many people think, oh, Tim, yeah, I love talking to you on WhatsApp. I don't even have WhatsApp. So just do me a favor, leave a comment below. I'll send it to them. I'll get the message to them. Don't even worry about DMing. I know that's just gonna create issues because there's gonna be some scammer pitching like some shady crypto and being like, oh, this is Jack Kellogg's crypto. Neither of us do it. None of us do that stuff. I'm sorry that the world is so corrupt. Um, but I do think that this will really help a lot of people learn. But you tell me, we'll have more spreadsheets. Tim Gratani's brother, we're going to need your help. Tim Gratani, Jack Kellogg, I hope that you um, are down for this idea. I think that we can really help a lot of people. You know, congratulations again to both of you guys on such an achievement. Congratulations to Tim Gratani on the upcoming 10-year anniversary of the CNN article. Pretty crazy. Life is crazy. Anyways... This was my idea for the day. Thank you to Miguel for getting all into the details of their first few months, but let's dig in more and let's really, you know, tear this process apart and learn from it. Thanks.